<laughs> okay. Okay. So so now there is a question that came through actually uh with what we are saying right now. The question was which jobs are easy to get with a math degree especially in South Africa. So seeing that you have been in the space for too long, I'm sure you work with other or maybe you know more. So yeah, I think uh if you can enlighten us on on that. Um, actually, a math degree opens up um, opportunity for problem-solving jobs. Uh, so being a consultant um, uh, in the quant space, we do value that as well. That's also critical. Um, if you upskill a little bit on top of your math degree, you can work in any field. I mean, you can... You can work as a data a data scientist. You can work as a data engineer. You can work as a data analyst. Almost anywhere, if you've got that degree as your baseline, because it proves two things: it proves that you are able to get through something that is challenging and come out on the other side. That is very much valued. Um, the fact that you are able to get through your degree is a big thing. It's what the degree proves. That's what the degree really is about. It's about the fact that you were able to get through it. You were able to push for the four years, do the degree, maybe do the honors, maybe do even a master's. It shows that you can be committed to certain things and make them work. But also what it shows is that you have the fundamental understanding and the talent for mathematics and quantitative sciences. So people that's in the workplace, that's what they generally look for. Couple that with a little bit of coding, understanding at least one language. Maybe you're good in Python. Um, SQL is a good language to pick up. If you if you learn SQL, um, you're able to manage data. You're able to manage large sets of data, uh, databases, things like that. Pick up a course in that. You pick up a course in Python um, and and some machine learning. I think you should, you're probably well on your way. <laughs> you're probably well on your way to, yeah, to, so, to getting most jobs. I guess I guess maybe I'm not answering the, the question. The, the, the answer to the question is um, any field that requires problem solving, usually in the consulting space and um, as a data scientist, data analyst, in any company that most companies do require that now, uh, and also as a quant. Yeah. I think those jobs are relatively easy to get. Relatively. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think let's it's safer that it's safer that we go to the questions now. I mean, yeah. I was checking the, the the student that I'm supervising, I, they 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 showed me a, a book on machine learning because he's also doing some machine learning courses um nice. here at VETS, um and then some networking computer computing those type of things so when i checked the book like i saw linear algebra man and that's the stuff we do yeah of course of course so so i was like yeah. wait so, yeah like this this is done in machine learning like this mess like this is and then the thing about us is that we are just doing the meds we're researching in the meds we're going deep in the meds but sometimes we never see the application of the meds the pure application of the pure meds when mm. i saw that man my head was spinning man oh you know what my brother when <laughs> i think you're gonna love the community because there we'll be talking about projects as well literally I'll be telling you about linear regression from application point of view, logistic regression from applicant po application point of view. And when you look at those uh, formulas and those models, you have done them in mathematics. You, 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 if, if you look at the formula, uh, your logic, logistic regression sure. from mathematics, and then you look at the application of logistic regression um in the real world when it comes to machine learning as an example i think i once gave you an example uh, in a previous talk 
if you're working for a bank and I want to see if if you are going to miss if you would you're gonna miss a payment, right? So we we can we call that a, a classification model, right? So we're trying to classify whether you as Ben Mahudu um you will miss a payment or not miss a payment. So that's a binary class that's a binary classification, right? So it's a binary thing. So meaning there's only two occasions that can happen, miss or not miss. In mathematics, we convert that into ones and zeros. Let's say in this case, maybe one would be to not miss, zero to be missing. In the real world, when you build a machine learning model, literally that's what happens. You build a classification model where you say, I want to see if... um. What is the probability that Ben Mahoud will miss a payment or this population? Based on this population, what is the percentage that will miss the payment when they apply for a loan? That is literally logistic regression. That is the mathematics, nothing else, pure mathematics. So that's logistic regression for you in, 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 in application into the real world. That's literally what banks do. That's why banks, obviously, when it comes to banking, mathematicians, statisticians, they are highly, highly, highly um, uh, sought for. Yeah. Yesterday, man, I was actually recording an episode with a software engineer. Well, a computer scientist slash software engineer. And he was telling me about the, the ones and zeros as well. So when you say yeah. ones and zeros, because we were talking about this binary thing, in mathematics, yeah. there is a, a, um, a course or a discipline called discrete maths. And it, it, it deals a lot with binary numbers and, and everything like that, the ones and zeros and stuff like that. And it seems like you guys use ones and zeros a lot in this lot. Um, applications. A lot. Um, when, when you're building a model, you have things called discrete variables. You have things called categorical variables. Um, bro, it, machine learning is just application of mathematics. Let's just put it that way. Ma machine learning, it's application of mathematics. That's it. So you as Ben Mahudu, if you were to tap, tap into data science now, you will thrive. I'm telling you now. You will thrive because there is not there is not a lot of work that you'll be doing. You already have the basis of mathematics. That is why, if you check a lot of courses that are data science courses, even the one at uh, at, at this academy I was telling you, explore the curriculum. You have to do mathematics first. There's linear algebra first. There's a bit of calculus, I think. There's calculus definitely. I don't know to what extent it is, but it is there. And then you have statistics, which statistics you cannot even walk away from. It's very, very important because as a data scientist, remember that some of the things that you'll be reporting on is numbers. So sometimes you might have to present where you're talking about you've, you've done data analysis. Now present to us, what is this data telling us, right? Now, now when you want to tell what this data is telling us, how are you going to calculate mean you're not gonna tell people in uh, in 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 the presentation that the mean of this thing is what 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 so in order for you to know what what average is you want to talk in layman's terms in terms that people understand so you'll be saying things like uh the average number of people that you know missed a payment or the average number of people that did one two three was this percentage or was this number you know and then you want to talk about the highest. So the highest in this case, when you're looking at statistics, it's max. The lowest is mean. Um, you understand? So all those, those are statistical terms. You have to go through that in order for you to be able to talk numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah quite interesting. Quite interesting, and at least I know that um, should this uh, academic lecturing thing not work for me, I have a place somewhere. Yeah. No, uh, when I let me tell you, when I really because you have uh, because you have a PhD, um, 
yo my guy um you have no idea how expensive you you will be in the industry you very expensive and uh you will be highly sought for definitely you wouldn't struggle to look for a job even if even if you haven't done data science if you go and look for a data science job now with your phd you already will be put on a certain level because of your phd you've done mathematics you know the the basis of data science because mathematics it's basis of data science mathematics and statistics hey, that's the foundation of data science Hey man, what are you doing now? Are you tempting me? <laughs> <laughs> ah no, no, that's 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 not my goal, man. Uh, I mean, you can always try like a small project in out outside outside um, lecturing. I mean, to be honest, I've known a lot of lecturers that that have been doing. More, in fact, most lecturers that I've known, they were doing more than one job. They, in fact, most of them, especially sure, when, I, sure. when I was in business school, especially they, most of them, they had, um, their own companies or consulting firms. True, true, yeah. true, true, yeah. true. Yeah. So you can be tempted. No, You're allowed to be tempted. Cannot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem with, I mean, I, I talk to many students every day yeah. and the problem is we don't know. Ish. You know? like they don't know and 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 you and you see a lot of brilliant students who leave maths because they think that maths doesn't have opportunities or they've had from people who are informed that maths doesn't have opportunities and they go, go up to do something else and 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 I'm like hey this thing is killing us yo that time i studied engineering um when when I studied engineering, I, I didn't like, I, to be honest, I, I don't want to lie to you. I knew when I was doing, I think, second year, I knew that I don't want to work as an engineer. Um, I just knew that I wanted to be in business, particularly consulting. That's what I wanted. So I was, I guess I was lucky, but now I'm wishing that I had studied computer science or mathematics. You see, because when you've studied those concepts and you are in data science, it's very easy for you to thrive. Way much easier. You know, it's on Friday great. I was having on Friday I was having a, a meeting with uh, two students. Um, mm. They are doing computer science, right? Mm. So now they're doing this maths, and you know this maths. You know the maths is proofs, is theorems, right. and now they're right. like, say, but like what a guan, like, like. Yeah. You know, yeah. how is this helping us in computer science? Because they're doing computer science and they're doing well in computer science, they say. Um, but they were like, they don't get how the maths fit into it. And yeah. I was just like, well, I'm not a computer scientist, but I'm sure somewhere, somehow it does fit, like you say. It does fit. Yes. Um, it's just the the idea. So I also measured in in, in maths till I graduated, right? So I was also always fascinated by the idea of proving a theory and just knowing that. So what, what, what it is proving to me, I saw is, okay, we've seen this pattern to be true, right? And we are, we are in this universe, call it the, the universe of math, this world of math, right? Where there are certain rules and numbers have certain relationships and rules. Right. So these are like your tools and we have this idea that this is true. And how do we build up from the element, the small truths that we have? How do we build up to that bigger truth that we want to prove? Right. So it's it's about creatively getting still abiding by the rules, the mini rules, but getting to the to the beautiful proof or the beautiful result. Right. So. Let's say now I say to you, design a self-driving car for me. And I say it's possible, right? If it if 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 people were like, ah, yeah, 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 I can't I can't design a self-driving car, man. That's that's too difficult. I have to, I have to nah. They, I just there's no way, man. 
like, unless I've seen it, there's no way, right? But it was those, it was that type of thinking that was the proving thinking that let's use these small, small things that we have. Let's, let's, oh, a car can see, right? I mean, no, a camera can see. Okay, how can we use visual, the small visual? Um, it can steer. Okay, how do we use that? And then how do we, how do we build up to this, this answer of a self-driving car? So it's a very, it's necessary in its training, your brain to get to a certain objective and creatively. So it's not always the it, mathematics is always seen as, ah, you're just smart. This is just, but it's, it's a creative process where, okay, how do I use this rule? How do I use this rule just to, and, and you fail a lot, a, a lot of the time. The proofs that we struggle with as students, people who've struggled with for years, bro. You know what I mean? And that's, what I, that's, that's another thing I appreciate is that these answers just didn't come. You know what I mean? And that's, they, 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 they took a lot of guys proving, some died trying to prove theorems. You know what I mean? And then... It, it was that thinking, right, that enabled mathematicians to prove beautiful concepts and beautiful theorems. So same thinking has allowed innovators, right, to innovate and, and bring in uh, your, your chat GPTs, your self-driving cars, your even games, you know what I mean? That thinking of slowly building up and into a beautiful result, you know? so. It's an important thinking that it trains you in. You won't be proving theorems in the industry, but you will be coming up with ideas on how to get something that has never been done before done. And that's what it does. It's that mental practice and having you be comfortable being in that state, you know, continuously. I go Need on, I right? say more. <laughs> Need I say more? No, I mean, like the way you've explained that, man, is is mm. is it's 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 top notch. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I think the way you linked up the mathematics, the proofs, and also the industry work, like, ah, man, I I, I don't have any words. <laughs> <laughs>